Namaste my friends and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Victor and today I'm going to share with you five things I think you should know about the month of June and the ascension energy that will be present within this month of June. It's a very awesome month. It's a month that's really going to be different than a lot of these previous months in the way that it's really going to help you get to the heart of why you've been on the spiritual journey this entire time. What will really set this month apart is your focus is going to shift on what's truly important, the heart of awakening, the heart within yourself. All of these fancy spiritual connotations aside, this awakening is stripping away the layers, allowing you to literally live from your heart and your truth. And that's what this is all about. And that's what this month is all about. That's what you're going to really all find yourself shifting around and orienting to is you living a life of deep meaning, purpose, fulfillment, and love. Not just saying the word love, but living it, feeling it for yourself, for other people. This month is all about connecting to the true divinity that underlies and permeates all existence. It's a very amazing month, my friends, and I feel just blessed to be here living through this powerful time. As I always do, of course, I will break this uh, monthly update down into five more specific themes, and I'll get into that right now. Number one, I wrote down sharing the load. More specifically, as weird as this might sound, next to it I wrote, ancestral karmic cleansing. A lot of these big emotions that are coming up for you and the reason why they probably don't seem like they have a place in your life based on what's going on in it is because a lot of the times these emotional patterns, even though you probably have been experiencing them your entire life, are not actually yours. Did you know that a lot of us souls have come here now to willingly take on the burdens of our ancestry? That you literally might be releasing pain that your uh, ancestors experienced during times of war or famine or whatever. Your parents, parents, grandparents, parents, parents. You might literally be feeling their emotion that they were unsuccessful in releasing and processing that you've taken on not only this lifetime worth of stuff, but your ancestors as well because you are intimately connected to them. And as you awaken, you become consciously aware of that and therefore you draw in elements of that into your moment to moment experience here and now. And this might seem like, oh wow, that's a lot of responsibility, Vic, but here's the nice thing. You can always ask yourself this question when you're feeling emotions coming up. Are these actually mine? A lot of times just having the awareness that they might not be yours will create such an amount of space with, between you and them that it won't even matter that they're there. You will no longer have to act from them as if they are yours. Once you know that, then you break the tie, you get the release. You do not only yourself a service because you free yourself from needing to attract them into your body anymore, but you also are doing, you're hooking up your ancestors in a pretty big and profound way way. The times we're living in are that profound. We are waking up that much to where what I just said is actually a relevant thing for most of us. And I'll give real quickly a clear example. This I was doing an Instagram live just yesterday and someone asked this question. They said, Victor, I'm, I'm pregnant, but I'm finding myself having these real strong, what seem like intuitions and fears about dying on the, as I give birth. Now, she's never, she has no logical reason to feel that way, but I, I chose to answer this person's question because I know exactly what she's going through. I went through this myself, having all these irrational fears and, what, and then synchronicities and what seem like intuitive premonitions about things that are going to happen in my life that are very serious and dark in nature that have not come to pass because I also realized what I just told you, that those are not her fears. She's not going to die on the table. She has no reason to worry about it. Those are just 
she's becoming so present in the moment that this situation is triggering something that she's connected to, maybe from a past life, maybe from her grandmother, something they experienced. We're becoming that expansive where we're able to embody these emotions in our now moment. But again, it's for the purpose of releasing and letting go and transcending and healing not only ourselves, but our past, but our ancestors. And it's a beautiful, noble, benevolent thing to do. It's also very reassuring because you can always ask that question. Are these emotions mine? This next one is fun and interesting. I wrote down establishing a deeper connection with the other side with kind of a leaning towards the extraterrestrial element of the other side. We are waking up so much that we are becoming consciously aware, experientially aware that there's a lot more to life and existence that meets the eye, including other consciousnesses and life forms that are connected and part of this bigger picture involving planet Earth. Many of us have come here now to Earth that are strongly connected to the stars and you're waking up at a point where you're going to start to become, a lot of you anyway, will start to become, this reality will start to make itself known to you in your own individual way. This is something I've been experiencing, these, these waves of connection with the other side over the last decade. But whenever it starts to kind of ramp up for me as it does tend to come in waves, I usually feel inspired to share about it. So ironically, I had a dream just last night <laughs> where I was in my dream and I noticed these ships in the sky that looked almost like out of Star Wars. And they caught my attention to where I realized, you know what, these are not normal airplanes. And once that clicked in my mind, I looked over and like in the clouds, it was a dream, mind you, in the clouds was a big extraterrestrial figure going like, shh, like we're here, that kind of thing. More, a more of an exciting little tale to tell is something that just recently happened to my wife. She, as I mentioned, I think in the last energy update, she's been really feeling inspired to sing during these ayahuasca ceremonies that she takes part in. She's got an amazing voice, but it was hard for her. She was feeling kind of afraid, you know? And this most recent ceremony, that was her intention. Once she drank the medicine and went and laid back down, guess whom appeared? There was a whole bunch of her, what she called her astral star family or astral medicine family is the way she put it that just surrounded her these beings were very humanoid looking very like excited had kind of a very discernible uh, energy and attitude that was very obvious to her she said it was the the most vivid experience she's ever had with the other side and she's had many encounters to the point where they were embracing her and kind of coming up to her and she could literally feel them touching her on her body but she sensed that they were literally there to help her sing. And she eventually, she eventually did. She stood up, she asked the shamans if she could sing, and she sang her heart out. She said she did such an amazing job per, you know, with, with the assistance and, and encouragement of these star these other beings that just appeared randomly. And I was actually at this person's house the following day. And there were people sharing about just how much my wife's song influenced them and how big releases they had. So these, these beings, these, when you are aware of these connections, it doesn't have to be a scary thing. They're literally here to help. And they might not come in the form of ETs. A lot of you might not resonate with that, and that's totally fine. For you, it could be your spirit guides, your angels, your deceased loved ones, or just the feeling that you're not alone and you're loved from God. It, it really is all, in a sense, one thing anyway, but there's divine support at your disposal, and they are waiting for us to become receptive and open enough for them to finally be able to come in and, and help us the way they can. And everyone will experience this in different ways, but this just very well might be a theme that you are having in your own way during this powerful month of June because we are becoming so open, because we are doing so much healing and cleansing. Number three, as we endeavor to move more into our hearts, we are, it's a very emotional time and you might find yourself naturally doing or knowing you should do more of, more, more processing. It's a great time to do processing. And what is processing and what does that mean? Processing is simply giving your body and your emotions and your, your inner child, your, yourself, 
some love and attention and time and rest. Understanding the significance, the profundity, the gravity of the transformational cleansing and process you're going through each and every day. It takes a lot of effort and work to grow so quickly that if we don't give ourselves time to rest and recuperate and process, then life can just get overwhelmed. We can become overwhelmed by this. But the most important thing is to recognize the signs that you need processing, which I'll go over in a moment, and then decide to take that time. I'll use an example of a good friend to help really make this very clear to you if you're unclear at this moment. So a good friend of mine, her name is Sarah, and she's a combo practitioner. She takes people through this Amazonian like super cleanse. It's very intense work for her as well. She has to hold space. She does this ceremony with all these people and it really affects her as well. And she has time, she needs to kind of relax and process this maybe for a few days after doing a whole weekend of ceremonies with, with all these people, experiencing all this cleansing in her home or whatever. Okay, and Sarah had a. I had planned on Sarah coming over to my house so for a podcast interview. I want to. I want to get her take on everything. But she sent me an email the morning of or the the day before. She said, "Victor, is there any way we can do this another time? I'm still processing. And I'm still feeling kind of tired and foggy. I could whip myself together if I have to, but really, I want to be at my best. So." When you need to process is when you're not feeling at your best, when you are feeling a bit foggy, a bit down, a bit lethargic, and a bit maybe emotional, just like where you don't really want to go out there and be a you know, social butterfly and be doing a lot of things. When you feel that way, do what Sarah did. Make, send that email. Call into work. Tell your friends, you know what, I know I had this plan, but I need some me time. You deserve it. And, and what's nice is you don't need that much me time when you really finally give it to yourself um, for you to recuperate very quickly. Number four, you might find that you're adjusting your life around the theme of you becoming lighter. Your vibration is becoming lighter, higher, raising. And as this happens, you'll start to look at all the elements of your life with new eyes, with new clarity, and oftentimes you're able to more clearly pick up on the things in your life that are causing you stress and heaviness and just seem out of place intuitively. So a lot of this awakening is sort of keeping up with the rising vibrational frequency that we all are in truth. And this can be a matter of just this could have been expressed itself in a lot of different ways. I'll share with you real quick what's going on with me. Um, I've been feeling like I've been too chronically tired, not exhausted, but like I never have the right amount of energy I need. I knew intuitively I need more self care time. So I bought my friend Aaron Dowdy. He sold me his awesome his sauna. I have a sauna upstairs in my room now or my, my little area, my loft. And I go in this sauna every day for about 45 minutes. I don't take my phone, I bring a notebook, I meditate, I do pranayama, and I stretch. I do nothing but self-care stuff. Now the sauna is not important, that's sort of a perk. The point is I go to my self-care box and I work on myself every day without fail. It feels so good, it's become almost addicting to me for about 45 minutes and my energy has increased. I've been able to produce way more content than normal. I just feel like a million bucks. That's how I'm doing it. Now, another thing I'm doing is I'm getting an assistant to take a lot of time off my hands. But you just might be able to look at your own life and say, where can I lighten my life up? This could be omitting a bad habit that's causing you to feel foggy every day because you're eating junk food or something. This could be setting a boundary with that needy friend that's drained. You find yourself ruminating about every single day. They're always needing something and always bugging you. It's a time to really take action and empower yourself and make the adjustment that you now know would benefit you. It's okay to do that. It will help you a lot and it's the right time to do that as well. Number five, all of what I just discussed really boil is really there for the sole purpose of you again falling more into your heart space, living your life more from your soul's perspective, and finding and experiencing deeper meaning, deeper fulfillment, deeper connection, and more importantly, most importantly, deeper love in your life. We came here to really bring the love 
to feel the love, to express the love, and just to be an example of one who feels and is connected to a whole lot of love. Okay, so you might find this playing out in a very practical sense where you might decide that your, your priorities and values might be shifting, where you're really like saying to yourself, you know what, I have got to find something that fulfills me deeply. These surface level pleasures and stimuli and these things in my life are no longer cutting it. I need depth. I need meaning. And I need meaning. I found that, luckily, in these retreats I do. I look forward to running these retreats so much because they, they remind me, and I need constant reminding. They remind me of what really matters. It's you, it's the people, it's, it's the, 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 the purpose I have. But, but when I'm away from them, I get all lost in my mind, lost in these tangent goals of mine that are ultimately insignificant and somewhat detached and distortions from my underlying purpose. I got the retreats now. My friend Aaron Dowdy, he's finding that he gets that from doing events. <clears throat> It doesn't matter. You'll find something. It'll be something unique and perfect for you. And to really paint this, uh, set this home, what really caused me to talk about this was something I saw last night as I was watching a movie with my family. The movie is called Jack. I don't know if you've seen it. It's with Robin Williams. Robin Williams plays uh, an adult character who's really a 10-year-old kid who's just aging four times the rate. So he's like this older guy looking like Robin Williams, but he's only 10 years old. Hanged out with a bunch of little kids. Anyway, Robin Williams has this teacher. His name is Bill Cosby. You all know him. Controversy aside, he's a character in the movie. And Bill Cosby was talking. Anyway, I'm getting to this point now. Bill Cosby is talking saying, do you know why I teach children? Because they remind me that there are other things in life that are important. There are other things in life that matter. The children are what grounds the Bill Cosby character into the fulfillment, the love, the connection with what life is really could be all about. We don't need all the flash. We don't need all the flair. We don't need to have lavish abundance. We need to be connected to something that fulfills our hearts. And now is the month where you have a real a real shot at finding what that is and then basing your life around it. If you have the courage to set those boundaries and giving yourself time to, to release and go into your emotions and all the other things we discussed are part of that, part of this ultimate worthy goal of finding yourself and finding your heart and finding your true place within the whole. Thank you, my friends. I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, <laughs> they're always fun for me. I always get outside of myself with these videos. It feels great. It's, it's good to be back and hanging out with you guys. I hope you enjoyed that video. Let me just say, if you're new to my brand, my brand new to my YouTube channel, welcome. It's an honor and a pleasure to have you here for I know the work you're doing. I respect you and I honor you and I'm grateful that you resonate with this type of information, whether it's not even me sharing it. I know who you are and I know what you're doing and I'm proud of you and I thank you. So anyways, <laughs> long intro aside, I have a gift for all of my subscribers. It's a meditation I made myself. It's a higher self reunion meditation. It helps you learn how to click in with that alignment with your higher being, your higher self, so you can get downloads and, and like intuitive messages and inspirations and passions. Now, I'm not implying that you're not connected. We all are always, but not everyone has found a way to tap into that consciously and express it fully. And that's what this meditation is designed to do. It's totally free. You can check it out down below if you'd like. If not, that's cool. Another thing I'll say, if you are um, if you like my YouTube videos, you might also like my Instagram account. I post daily content similar in nature every day. And just look me up at Victor Odo. I'll also leave a link down below. And then lastly, I have a podcast I do with my wife, Patty, where it's a little bit different of a tone than the video. It's more of a candid conversation about our experiences and just general tips about the awakening process. I'll leave a link down for that below if you want to check it out. You can see it on iTunes and also my website. With that said, you guys are awesome. I wish I could just be hanging out with you right now, but I can't. It's a camera, but I, I, uh, I love you all. Thank you for being you. Namaste.